Mm, we have a tragic here, and welcome back to Mage Knight. Uh, we just did our epic, epic turn fighting the Avatar. Now, we did kill him, which is awesome. Let's flip that sucker over. But we failed to actually take the city, which really sucks because this is actually not a city. It's just a really fancy magical glade, which means if we took the city, everyone would get a heal and everyone would get, you know, a gold mana. Now we kind of screwed up. We should have attacked about halfway through the night turn instead of right at the end. So we could use some of the turn to get further up. We now need to get all the way up here and kill this avatar who is here before the end of this night coming because it's almost the end of the game. All right, we've got one more day. Now he's not as hard to block, like he's only got 10 to block, but he has assassination and paralyze. So he's in a way is harder. But we've got a few things we will need to do first. You'll note that I haven't actually done the uh, redrawing the hands yet because I needed to check on something and it is actually true. Like if I just flick this guy over, I didn't know this. See how he's got like a level three, well actually we're on level 12. Yeah, it's still the same. See how he has three fame? You get three fame for every tick that you knock the avatar down. So we actually have uh, nine fame for these guys. We have three fame for Etheria and we've got 15 fame for Bra. So we're just going to do that. One, two, three for him. Nine for him takes him to 46. Nine for him takes him to 57. And 15 for him takes him to 85. And he also actually has to go down twice because he used Threat Nile, so some spell that makes him lose Threat. So there's a bit of correction. So the most important thing is this guy actually levels up again. Yunk. He's got another slot and he is now got seven cards to draw. Did I do this last turn? I think I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Oh, I better check that. Yeah, so I have advanced the turn. So... We've got another two turns basically to get the hell out of Dodge. So now that we've calculated all this, there's one other thing. Basically, when you retreat from a city, it's not counted as a force withdrawal. So all these guys actually have their, their one health more. So I'll just delete one health from everybody. And also, I kind of screwed up my blocking uh, with th this chick. And, oh, wait, that's another thing I forgot. She had a gold mana, so this we were not going to discard that. We're going to put this in here, and we're going to pretend that we used her gold mana for the Illusionist. And I kind of screwed up my blocking a little bit here. So I think I'm going to... I guess I could redo it. See, what I could do is I could actually... So we took... This guy gave everybody resistances, right? And then he took eight fire attack, which left with one damage after the resistance, which then wounded him, and I took none in hand. But what I could have done is actually blocked with the illusionist. So that would be eight with absorption two, which would make it six damage. It would wound him, right? And then there'd be another four damage left over, which I could then assign to him, which he would completely absorb, which means that we'd have this loser unit wounded and this awesome unit not wounded. And we could do the same thing here. It's just that these... These, these wounded, the, <laughs> the other units are really good, so we'll leave this one wounded. So I'm just going to make that little correction. That's kind of a cheat, but stuff it. There was so much going on, it's easy to miss things. So just to reclaim, we had eight, eight fire damage went in here. Two, we had resistances to all. So eight went in here, that turned into six damage. 
So we got wounded with the six damage. Then you go six minus two is four damage left. We assigned that to this guy and we absorbed all that damage because he's got seven armor with fire resistance. Okay, so I think that's all the corrections we need to do. And now we are just going to do the next turn. So we're gonna do two turns in a row here because everybody is actually, oh, we've got to draw our cards first. So this guy's got one, two, three, four, five, right? This guy's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yep. Starts with a gold mana. This guy's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this guy's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. Oh, and she also gets plus one because of planning. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, plus one. And that is everything. Okay, so we're ready to start the turn. And the turn is very simple. Wolf Hawk flips up, Bra flips up, and Aretha flips up, and now it's Tuvok's turn. Flip. And we have to start working on how we're gonna deal with all these wounds and get the hell out of Dodge. So basically he is here. So he, yeah, well, he's got a very obvious move. He's gonna go, bam. Temporal portal, there is a blue, so he's gonna take that blue. And this is allowing him to teleport two spaces to a safe space or increase hand limit. But we're gonna take the two teleport and it's gonna go one, two, and he's on his way. Now, unfortunately we can't use this thing, which really sucks. I guess what I could do is teleport once. So if I could teleport to there, I could teleport to there. Players and actions turn, you may move to an adjacent revealed space without provoking ones. Whether you move or not, your hand limit is a high up by one. As above, except either move two spaces to the revealed safe space, instead of one or get the hand limit increased by two. So I could do that and then I could do this and get a crystal, which might be a better thing to do. So why don't I take, he has tons of white, remember? So I'm gonna take this white. So he's gonna take, because last time he had like four white cards. So that's what we're doing. So we're gonna teleport to here and that's that. I just want to get that crystal in my inventory. One, two, th uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. He's still on a castle, so he gets to draw another two cards. Blam, you blam. Oh, and he gets plus one because he only moved one, so he's blam. Excellent. And that is the end of that turn. And now we just declare end of round. And now we have our final turn, which we'll just quickly do. So flip this over, flip this over. Okay, so for starters, he can flip this, heal one point and gain a crystal. The other alternative, does this have a heal on it? We've got move, influence, block, or attack. Yeah, so he's actually gonna go bam and use that, oh, there's two blues now. So he's gonna bam and use that blue. That gives him seven movement. And he's gonna go, okay, so what I'm gonna do is he's gonna use his teleport to go here. And then he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And that's his move. You blam, you blam. And that is the end of that. So just reset him.
Remember, his uh, his uh, wound does not get cleared. Now it's bra. Flippity, flippity. Huh. He doesn't have anything of interest. He's got plus two movement here. So that is actually giving four movement, uh, three movement actually, because it's the day, which means he can go to here. Remember, he took this, so that's plus one movement. So that's one, two, three. Then he can do this and take the gold and do heal two. One, two. Bam. You blam. And that is the end of that. So he is also now reset. Bump, bump, bump. What have you got? Something good. Again, we want to try and get as far out of dodge as possible. So we need to do all this annoying calculations. So from my last experience, I think it was a lot quicker to actually go this way than go this way. So that is four, eight, nine, 10, 11. Well, that is two, five, eight, 10. So it's sort of the same, but not quite. So that, let me try, yeah. So, but the difference is if we get here, we're next to her castle, which is very, very cool. What would be great if we can get into the crystal mine? So we need one, two, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, these are five to go through because it's, oh no, it's daytime. It's daytime. I keep thinking it's nighttime for some reason. So that's one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen to get into the mine. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. So anyway, let's see what we can produce. Where are we? Three. Okay, so lots of wounds. For starters, we have this, move five. You can enter mountains at a move cost of five and they are considered a safe space for you at the end of the turn. If you end your turn in the mountain hills, your hand limit is higher by two for the next time you draw cards. Wow, so these are hills. So what we actually wanna do is one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's what we want to do. We want to get to there for eleven. Should be able to do this. So that is bam. And we're going to take a black mana, which using polarization is actually gold. So that is five movement. We're going to play a blood token sideways for plus two, that's five, six, seven. And then we go bam and you bam with the gold mana from our, because we're standing on a glade in the daytime. And that is five, another five movements. That's 10, 11, 12 movement we've just created. So that is not enough. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Yeah, well, that's what we want to do. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we didn't even need the blood token, but whatever. We can also discard blood tokens. So we've got lots of blood tokens finally for this person. So she can actually start behaving how she's supposed to. Right. So ready and ready, but remember that's wounded. And finally... Blunk, what have you got? Oh, beautiful. There is no, fortunately there is no green mana, so we can't actually heal. He's here. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We want seven movement basically. Well, we're going to do one to heal one. 
We've got no green mana. That is such a shame. What is this? We can swap a tome of relearning. Is there anything here we'd like to get? Blue crystal. Movement. Secret ways. You're able to enter mountains on move cost of five. I feel no pain. Once a turn except during combat, discard one wound from your hand. If you do, draw a card. Regenerate. What's this? Feral allies. Exploring costs one less. Once a turn, attack one or reduce one attack of an enemy by one. That could be quite handy, reducing attacks. Beguile. This is probably the best one here. The siege is also very good. I don't think I'm actually going to... So what was his abilities? See, I don't think I'm actually going to take any of his abilities. So yeah, so we're going to do that. We heal one. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, because there's no green mana, unfortunately. And that is one, two, three, four into the keep. Okay. And that is his turn as well. Flipperunitsky. And he is completely done. And that is the end of the round. So he's in the middle of nowhere. Everyone, she's made pretty good progress. So we might get up there and actually do this. So we're going to slip this to night time. We're going to change this to three. This is the last turn. One, two, three, four, one, two. So let's shuffle the die. Come on, give us a good, good, a good source, please. Yeah, blam. Okay, so again, half or more of the source are non-default mana. So we re-roll all of the non-defaults. One, come on, come on, anything but red and white. Oh, what a horrific, horrific source. Okay. And... Now going in order, starting with Wolfhawk, we're just going to shuffle all our cards and I'm going to do the, uh, the tactic selection now. So he is here, right? Now this is interesting because he is in a keep, but he's actually in his uh, opponent keep. Now if we find the rules, now the rules are all in a big mess because of this is an old version of the mod with the broken the broken rule sheets. But if I can find the actual rules for... Here it is. Team rules apply, except you're all on the one team. See, team rules section, page 13 of the Mage Knight book. So here it is, team rules. A player may enter an empty keep owned by his ally, and he can recruit units there. When in or adjacent to an allied keep, his hand limit is increased, but only for keeps he owns himself, right? So what that means is, I am in a keep or adjacent to a team member's keep, which means I can actually draw my full hand, which is six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He can draw seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She is also next to a keep. It's her own keep. So she has one. So she can draw to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But she also finished in a mountain space, which means I think she can also draw one. Uh, let me have, I have to look at the card again. So where it is, here we are. So she finished in a mountain space last time with powered by green. If you end your turns in a mountain's hills, your hand limit is increased by two or one. So her hand limit is increased again by uh, one. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, plus one for the keep, plus one for the card. And finally, this guy, 
he is also at his own keep. So he gets to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, plus one, two for the two keeps. And that's that. Okay, also we have another red mana coming onto the dummy player. And unfortunately he's getting a red card as well. And that is about that. So we go gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver. I think that's right. One, two, three, four, one, two. Yep. Okay. Did we not res reveal one monastery? Oh yeah, we revealed one monastery. Three monasteries revealed. I've been doing the monasteries all wrong, haven't I? One, two, three. Yeah, I'm so used to it in the because it's so it's all automated in the other game. So there's actually three of these are supposed to be up every turn. Well, that was a huge mistake. We're a lot less powerful than we should be. Okay, whatever. That is that. You know what I might do is I might actually do tactic selections at the start of the next turn because I think we're getting a bit along in time. But we are ready for the last round and we are beelining up here. Now I did check with the rules and basically we win if we kill this avatar. You don't have to actually clear all the monsters from the location. Apparently if we just kill the avatar, even if some of his army is still alive, we'll still count that as winning the game. But that's about that. I will see you guys 